Kelsey Harris is a blogger, a clinical counselor, and specialist working with people who suffer from chronic illness and pain. Thank you, Kelsey, for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me, Lejeune. Um, so yeah, I am a uh, registered clinical counselor, so that's also known as a psychotherapist in some regions, um, and I have a master's in counseling. And I actually came to counseling because I myself have chronic pain and a chronic illness um, and autoimmune disease, actually. And so at the beginning of kind of my health journey, I ended up going to psychotherapy as one of the, uh, the ways to heal. And I realized that a lot of other people were going through the same um, emotional struggles that I was. And I wanted to be able to help them in kind of the same way that I was being helped. So um, what I want to talk about today is chronicity thoughts. So I practice a type of psychotherapy called acceptance and commitment therapy, which sounds kind of funny, but it is um, a, a cognitive behavioral therapy that also emphasizes um, some like life meaning and values and, uh, um, and is kind of interactive and experiential. So chronicity thoughts are really common when people have chronic illness. So Chronic illness itself has become a real epidemic in young women. So kind of mostly women between the ages of 15 and 45. Um, it's very, very common to get an autoimmune disease right now. Um, and there are many factors involved with that. And what happens when we get really, um, when we get sick or have chronic pain is that we end up having a lot of thoughts about the pain and about our lives. So chronicity thoughts are things like, um, I, I feel like my life's never going to get any better. This is kind of it for me. All, all I can think about is the pain. I worry all the time about the pain um, and, and those types of thoughts. So there are a few different categories of them. So there's ruminating about the pain. There's magnifying what our life's like, the, how the illness is going to impact our life. Um, and uh, there's just general worry as well. So if someone were to come into therapy with these types of thoughts, I am going to give kind of an overview of how I might work with someone. So knowing that everybody's an individual is coming with different um, backgrounds. So some people already have a history of anxiety, and depression. Some people don't. This, their distress is really just related to their illness. So it does vary a little bit. But in general, I use six different processes to help clients uh, deal with their chronicity thoughts. So Usually, usually where I start, um, and this can be done in any order, so I don't have to start this way, but usually where I start is by contacting the present moment. So that means just really getting present and centered. So we had a presenter talk about, um, uh, you know, using walking meditations um, or breathing meditations to get grounded and centered. So that's definitely one way you could do it. You could also just do it with, with one of my favorite exercises, which is dropping anchor. So in this case, what we would do is just acknowledge any thoughts, feelings, and sensations that we have. And then also notice the feeling of our feet on the floor. Um, and notice what we can see, notice what we can hear. And again, acknowledge what we're experiencing and notice what we can, um, uh, smell and, and touch and um, uh, uh, taste, right? So we're just using our five senses to, to get grounded in the moment. Actually, I should back up for a, a moment. Um, when we have really distressing thoughts, so whether they're about illness or and pain or about anything, like if they're anxious thoughts, you know, worry thoughts, if they're um, grief thoughts, sadness thoughts, anything like that, when they're really um, in our face, when we get hooked by them, we stop being able to do everything that we normally can. So for example, um, if we were to put our hands up to our face and in the room around us, we imagine that we see, um, our, everything that's important to us. So our families, friends, uh, activities, places, everything we value is in the room. And then everything that's boring that we have to do is also in the room. So cleaning and taxes and all that stuff. And then also things we don't like. So our painful sensations, our illness, that's in the room with us. And then we imagine that our hands are our thoughts and feelings. So when they're right in our face, we really can't see much in the room. And we certainly can't do anything with our hands. We're very limited in, in what we are able to see. So they're hooking us. When we drop our hands to our laps, this is what we're doing with our thoughts and feelings. Now we can 
really see everything that's important to us and we can interact with it and live a much better life. It doesn't mean that we've gotten rid of the thoughts and feelings. They're just not as impactful for us. So that's what we're trying to do in, in using these processes. So first, usually what I do is teach clients to, to drop anchor and just become more present. And then um, another place we could go after this would be um, noticing. So I call this the noticing self, but it's the part of you that is aware of everything. So it's aware of your thoughts and feelings. It's aware that I'm talking right now. It's aware of your breathing. And when we start to utilize this kind of mindful aspect of ourselves, we can then notice that our thoughts are just thoughts, that they come and go and, uh, and, and our emotions are always changing as well. With the thoughts themselves, um, what we try to do is create some distance between us and them. So we get them from here to go down to our laps. And there are many, many ways we can do this, but it's really teaching you that your, your thoughts are just thoughts, right? Even if we really, really, truly believe them, they are just thoughts. And when we see that, when we really start to experience that, they are less impactful on our behavior, basically, um, and, and on our lives. So a really simple way to do this would just be to notice and name the thoughts. So I usually start with, with clients. So if they're having going to see thoughts like, you know, it's terrible and I think my life's never going to get any better. So I'm having the thought that it's terrible and I think my life's never going to get better. And then I add usually one more piece to that. So I notice I'm having the thought that it's terrible and I think it's never going to get any better. And usually once you do that a few times, um, it starts to create that distance. So that's kind of the primary way I would target the thought. But there's some other pieces that are really important. So usually when we have a thought, there's an emotion that accompanies it. So often with um, chronicity thoughts, we get either anxiety or depression, so sadness coming along with it. And it's really important that we learn to accept those emotions and allow them, right? So our emotions are important. They tell us things just like our sensations do. And you can do this, actually, this kind of acceptance with sensations as well. When they're present, when you get pain, um, it's your body's trying to tell you something. So what we want to do is just kind of learn to allow it to be there. And usually how I would go about this is just to, again, notice the sensation, maybe name it or the emotion. So I notice I'm having pain. I notice I'm having anxiety and just really notice where it is in your body, maybe what it looks like, some visualization. And then I send breath into it. So you don't have to change your breathing at all, but just kind of send your breath into that part of your body. And the idea is to send it in there, not to get rid of it, but just to help make some space for it. And then once we make some space for it, we can just allow it to be there. And then that just lets us keep kind of going with our day. So once we've kind of done that, especially when we paired that with the thought distancing, creating that distance, um, we can then kind of do the, the final two things, which is connect with our values. So who and what is important to you, what qualities of action and being are important to you. Um, and I'll use an example for this one. So for me, compassion would be one. Um, makes sense given the field that I went into, but so... I, I compassion, that's a value that I have. And if the final step is committed action, so it's to live by that value. So what are you doing? So I, I can be really sick and laying in bed, but still live the value of compassion. How could I do that? Well, I could offer myself some self-compassion, self right? So, you know, placing a hand on my, on the part of my body that I need to give compassion to and just sending it in there. Um, and I think compassion, self-compassion is a really important piece to, to healing with chronic illness anyway. Um, it's something most of us don't do enough of. So definitely important to include at some point. Um, but that's just one example of how you could do that. Someone who has, who is chronically ill also has the um, value of health. Like maybe that's taking care of their physical health through exercise or something like that might be really difficult when you're, when you're ill, but you, maybe there's some way you can still do that. So maybe it's, you know, maybe you can't go to the gym, but maybe you can walk down the street to the mailbox and back, right? So um, all of those together is how I would help somebody typically, very generically <laughs> with, uh, with dealing with chronicity thoughts in the context of their chronic illness.
All right. Thank you, Kelsey, so much um, for jumping on and sharing that with us, because I think a lot of people are unaware of how chronic illness and mental health all ties in together when you get stressed out situations that happen. Um, I know my friends suffer from a lot of, you know, stress and things like that and didn't know how to manage it and how it took a toll on her immune system. Um, so again, thank you um, so much for explaining everything and how it works. So until next time, thank you guys.